Welcome to our biomonitoring webinar. We created this webinar to assist our wonderful volunteers as they venture forth to discover the health of our beautiful mountain streams. Why do we have a volunteer biomonitoring program? There are a few reasons. One is education. To educate local residents about stream ecology and water quality. Another is to help characterize stream health comparing streams and documenting changes over time within a given stream. Volunteer data is also being increasingly used by government agencies. So our program is surveying the health of the aquatic community in a stream. Now whether or not we find a specific type of insect depends on two primary things. The in-stream habitat, so various types of habitat you'll find different types of organisms. The other factor is water quality. How clean is the water that these critters are living in? Habitat varies greatly depending on the size of the stream. One way that biologists use to approximate stream size is something called stream order. Stream order starts with first order streams, which are basically springs. They're coming directly out of the mountain. So when a first order stream comes out of the mountain, if it meets another first order stream, it becomes a second order stream. When a second order stream meets another second order stream, it becomes a third order stream. If a third order stream and a second order stream meet up, nothing changes. It just continues on as a third order stream. So for example, the Mississippi River is estimated at being a twelfth order stream. So one theory that biologists use to try to explain what types of aquatic insects we expect to see in certain types of habitat is something called the river continuum concept. This concept is it's kind of complicated but in essence what it says is that as water moves out of the mountains and down into the foothills and it flattens out into the plains that habitat and the physical factors of the water change greatly. Up in the mountains, you're going to see a lower velocity, a lower volume of water, but it's going to be on a steeper gradient. It's going to be flowing over large boulders and cobbles, and it's going to be a largely an erosional type of a landscape. The temperature up in the mountains in those headwater streams is going to be colder, and there's going to be a higher UV penetration. As we move down into the foothills, things flatten out, streams start coming together and forming larger water bodies and you start getting depositional areas, areas of, of sand where the substrate has been you know, run through the ringer a time or two and you're actually getting sand instead of cobblestones and you're getting depositional areas along the sides uh, creating different types of habitat. The water is also a warmer temperature in lower areas. The volume of water, the velocity, is, has increased and light penetration increases as you move down into the plains, into the flatlands. So there's a lot of things that happen going from the mountains down into the plains. And it's important to understand that we expect to see the greatest diversity of insects in roughly third and fourth order streams. Those are the streams with the greatest variety of habitat and therefore we expect to see the greatest diversity of insects. It's also important to understand that we will also see seasonal variation depending on what time of year we are sampling. The final thing to understand about the river continuum concept is that it was modeled to show how streams change across a forested landscape. So this is a basic assumption that this theory makes. As we know, not all rivers and streams are in a forested landscape. Which brings us to the other factor, water quality. So the really neat thing about doing biological monitoring is that all of these critters that we're going to be sampling have a different tolerance level. Each species has a different tolerance level in terms of pollution. Some species can tolerate more pollution. Some species are very sensitive and can't tolerate much pollution. So this will vary a lot even between taxa. And the EPT taxa are generally the most intolerant organisms. EPT being 
Ephemeroptera, Plecoptera, and Trichoptera, or mayflies, stoneflies, and caddisflies. So when we do our sampling, we're looking for two things. We want to find a certain diversity of insects. We also want to find a certain number. If we go out and we can only find 50 insects, we know something's wrong. If we go out and we find 250 insects, that might look good at first, but we have to look closer. We have to find out what type of insects we're looking at and look at them in terms of their pollution tolerance levels. We run our data through different metrics, and those metrics are looking at the balance of, say, shredders versus uh, predators. We want a certain balance of different types of those trophic groups to qualify a stream as being healthy or unhealthy. The health of a stream ecosystem is really regulated by the health of a watershed. And a watershed can simply be described as that area of land upstream of where you may be standing in a stream. Another example would be if you were very small and in the bottom of a bathtub standing on the drain looking up at the sides of the tub, all the shower water that fell into the tub would be in your watershed. Any water that fell outside the tub would be in another watershed. And a watershed can be split up into multiple different land uses from forests to industry, to commercial land, residential land, agriculture, and all of those are going to impact the health of the stream that you're sampling. When we have very few insects in the stream, that could be a sign of chemical pollution or sediment. And the sediment is the number one pollutant in western North Carolina. It could be a function of many things. High stormwater levels after it rains, logging activities, livestock trampling stream banks, development and roads being constructed up into the watershed. Anywhere there's exposed dirt, that's a source of sediment to our streams. So why do we have volunteers doing stream monitoring? One reason is just to educate local residents about stream ecology, water quality, and the importance of water in our ecosystems. The other reason is to help characterize stream health, help to compare streams to each other and document changes within a stream over time. It's primarily the responsibility of the North Carolina Division of Water Quality to ensure that we have safe, healthy streams. The Division of Water Quality, however, is only able to sample their streams any given location once every five years. As you can imagine, there are a lot of things that can happen to a stream in five years. That's why it's important to get volunteers to go out and gather information so that we can help direct the Division of Water Quality if it looks like a stream is perhaps higher quality than they had originally thought it was, or perhaps that it's going downhill really quick and in need of, of help to get it back up to a healthy level. Our volunteer biomonitoring program is a kind of mixture between the sampling that the North Carolina Division of Water Quality performs and other volunteer monitoring methods such as Isaac Walton League or Save Our Streams. The North Carolina Division of Water Quality, when they go out and sample a stream, they're really thorough. They've got well-trained biologists. They're using 10 different sample methods and they're rating streams from poor to excellent. They can characterize fine differences between sites and over time and they can determine the type of impact that might be happening in a given creek. Other biomonitoring programs typically only use, say, one riffle kick. And they're good at getting a rough idea of, you know, some really degraded streams, the worst of the worst, but it's not really fine-tuned enough to identify some impaired streams or those that are of really high quality. This is why we tried to develop a program that was somewhere in between the two. The program utilizes three different methods, not ten, not one, but three, including a riffle kick, a leaf pack sample, and a visual collection.